So welcome for this session. So we are still continuing with the blocks revision. So I want us to do some question on uh, replacement analysis. Replacement analysis. So open with me this question. Made, uh, November 2016, question 4C. November 2016, uh, question 4C. Question 4C, you are told that Moaka Limited is considering the acquisition of a new machine to replace the existing machine. So now let me take you back under replacement analysis. We see that under replacement analysis, it involves determining whether to replace an old and uh, with a new and a more efficient assets. And we see that there are five steps, uh, six steps for them. One, you determine the incremental outflow, incremental depreciation per annum, incremental salvage value, terminal benefits, incremental inflow, and then lastly number six, you evaluate using NPV. And the concept is that you should only replace if the NPV, uh, if the NPV is positive. So Moraka Limited is considering the acquisition of a new machine to replace the existing machine currently being used in the production process. The existing machine was acquired two years ago at a cost of two million. It was originally estimated to have a use life for five years with no salvage value. The use life was five years ago, I mean it was five years, then it was acquired two years ago. So that means there is a remaining economic life of three years. Then second paragraph. A critical evaluation of the machine now shows that the machine is usable for another five years. That means from now, the remaining economic life was three years. So now instead of now three years, now it will be five years. So in short, there is an additional two years. For another five years, with a salvage value of 250,000 at the end of this period, the disposal value of the existing machine is currently estimated at 1.25 and that's what we call the market value of the existing of the old machine the new machine is estimated to cost uh, that 140,000 and the estimated salvage value is 1 million at the end of its yeah at the end of its use life for 5 years the new machine will also require an additional investment in working capital of 650 at the start of the asset use for life. The investment in working capital will however be recovered at the end of the fifth year half, at the end of five year use for life. The following information related to the estimated earning before depreciation and tax over the coming five year period of the two machine. So you have year one to year five for new machine and the existing machine. The cost of capital is 10 percent and the firm applies the straight, uh, straightened method of depreciation. Corporate tax rate is 30 percent. Using NPV technique, advise the company, company's management on whether to replace the existing machine. So whether to replace step number one, we see that you need to determine incremental outflows. That's the present value of cash outflow. And how do we determine the present value of cash outflow? We say that you will take the cost of the new asset or the new machine. You add installation cost in case there is any. Also, you add working capital. Then you raise the market value of the old asset. Then you add capital gain tax. And how do you determine the capital gain? You see that to get the capital gain, you compare the market value of the old asset, you compare against its net book value. So there's the net book value of the old asset. So that's the first step. So how much is the cost of the new asset? Now let's go to the third paragraph. The new machine is estimated to cost that 140. Uh -huh. There is no installation cost, but there is working capital. The new machine will also require an additional investment in working capital of 650. Remember we said that working capital is an outflow at the beginning and becomes an inflow at the end. 
Now let's go to back to the second paragraph, the last sentence of the second paragraph. The disposal value of the existing machine is currently estimated at 1250. So you raise the market value of the old asset. If you are to sell it now, you are going to dispose it at 1250. You deduct that. Then we add the capital gain tax. The market for the old asset. If you are to sell the old asset now, we are going to fetch 1250 from the market. Then you compare how much is the net book value. The net book value is the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. The first paragraph, the second sentence, the existing machine was acquired two years ago at a cost of two million. So it has depreciation. Two million. And then you are told that the estimated uh, uh -huh, at two million. It was originally estimated to have a use free for five years with no salvage value. It's two thousand divided by five, so that you get the depreciation panel. Then we have been with the asset for the last two years. So how much is that? Eh? So two thousand divided by five. Divided by two. That's eight hundred. So that means the net book value is twelve hundred. The net book value is 1200 but if you have to sell it now, you will sell at 1250 So that means you will sell it at a gain. So there is a capital gain of 50 If you sell at a capital gain, you will be subjected to tax on that capital gain. So you multiply by 30. So when you multiply by 30, that's an amount of 15 So how much is the present value of cash outflow? So you take that 140, you add 650. Uh, then you minus 1250. So that means currently you need an amount of 2555. So that's the first step. Then second step, you are to determine incremental depreciation per annum. And how do you get incremental depreciation per annum? So you take depreciation per annum of the new asset you raise depreciation per annum of the old asset. So let's get depreciation per annum of the new asset. The new asset will cost that 140. There is no installation cost. In case there was installation cost, you had installation cost. Then you raise the salvage value. Let's go to the third paragraph. The new machine is estimated to cost that 140 and it's estimated salvage value of 1 million. So it will not depreciate fully. It will have a salvage value of 1 million. And then you divide by the estimated economic drive, it's five years. That's how you get the depreciation panel. And then you raise depreciation panel of the old asset. Now, for the old asset, they have done a devaluation now. So how much is the net book value now? So you take the net book value of the old asset. Currently, it's 1,200. So therefore, you take 1,200, but after the devaluation, now let's go back to note number, the second paragraph. Second paragraph. A critical evaluation of the machine now shows that the machine is usable for the next five years with a salvage value of 250. So the machine will have a salvage value of 250. So that means the depreciable amount is 950. Then it's usable for the next five years. So how much will be the depreciation per annum? So this one will be 428. Here we have it's 190. So that means the incremental depreciation in amount of 238. Good. Then we go to step number three. Step number three, you have to determine incremental. Uh, salvage value and how do we get the incremental salvage value? So you'll take the salvage value of the new asset, you raise the salvage value of the old asset. Now let's start with the salvage value of the new assets. Here's the salvage value. The new asset, the salvage value will be 1 million. And the salvage value of the old machine will be 250. So that means there will be incremental salvage value of 750. Uh -huh. Step number four, you have to determine incremental 
or you have to determine the timing of benefits. Eh? Determine, determine of benefit. What do we say about the terminal of benefit? We say that terminal benefit is made up of two elements. One is the incremental salvage value and then working capital. So in our step number three, the incremental salvage value is 750. Working capital, the working capital requirement was 650. So and that one will get an amount of 1400. So at the end of the economic life of five years, you expect to have a terminal benefit, an amount of 1400. Step number five, you determine the incremental earning. Now for the incremental earning, let us that the following information here to the estimated earning before depreciation and tax over the coming five years for the two machines. So we have year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. So we are given the incremental earning before depreciation and tax. That's what we need. Eh? Incremental earning before depreciation and tax. Now, for example, year one, the existing machine is 800, but the new machine will generate 1400. So that means there is an incremental earnings of 600. You just take 1400 minus 800. Year two, it's from 700 to 1350. So there is an increment by 650. Year three, 750 to 1300. So that's 250, that's 550. Uh -huh. 650 uh, to 1450. So 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 800. Eh? And then year 5, 600 to 1200. That's an increment by 600. Uh -huh. So now with that, that was the incremental uh, earning before depression and tax. So we can also deduct depreciation. Or instead of adding depreciation, we say that you can raise tax directly. You raise tax directly, 30%, so that we get earnings after tax. So 30%, that's 60, that's 180. Uh, 650 times 0.3, that's 185. 550 times 0.3, 165. That's 240. And this is still 180. So that now we get the incremental earnings after tax. That one will be 420. Uh, 650 minus 195. 455. 550 minus 165. 385. This one will be 6. That one will be 560. And this one will be an amount of 420. Now, once you get the earnings after tax, then we add depreciation tax shield benefits. You take 30% of the depreciation, of which the incremental depreciation per annum was 238. Depreciation was not changing, it was the same. So it will be 71.4. Or alternatively, alternatively, this being the earning before depression and tax, you take this, then you raise depreciation so that now you get the earning before tax. You raise the tax to get the earnings after tax. Now once you get the earnings after tax, you add back depreciation. You still get the same thing. And that's how you get the cash flows. Uh, so this one will be 491.4, 455 plus 71.4 to be 526.4. 456.4 6 that 1.4 and this one will be 491.4 then in our cash flow you can also add the terminal benefit remember at the end of year 5 we have the estimated terminal benefit so let's also add terminal benefit but the terminal benefit will only be realized at the end of the economic life eh? that's in year 5 
So therefore, our estimated cash flows, Yawan does not change its 491.4, 526.4, 456.4, 6 that 1.4. Uh -huh. This one will be 1891.4. Lastly, once we have the cash flow, we want to determine NPV. So to get NPV, we have to discount our cash flows. Eh? Present value interest factor. How much was the cost of capital? The cost of capital is 10%, eh? so it will be 10% year end. So this one is not an annuity because the cash flow are not the same. Since the cash flow are not the same, we use the first table. This is 0 0.991. 82, 64, uh, 75, 13, 68, 30, uh, 62, 09. With that, now you're able to get the present value of the cash flows. Present value of the cash flows. So we have 491. You have it's 446.73. Here we have it's 435. And this is 343. For that 1.2. You will have its 11.74. So NPV is the present value of cash inflow. You less present value of cash outflow. So our present value of cash inflow. You add the total, the present value of cash inflow. So you add for that 1.2, uh, 343, uh, 4.35, 4.46.73. And you'll get the present value of cash inflow, the total is 28.30. Then you raise the present value of cash outflow. Present value of cash outflow is what we had in step number one. The present value of cash outflow was 25.55. So how much is our NPV? Get an amount of 275. And since our NPV is positive, therefore you should advise the management that they should replace the machine. They should replace the machine. Good.